Excuse me, Mr. Elliot, but I was just wondering. What does the Ohio State Government do? Excellent question, Maddie. I will show you what the government does. The first thing you should know is that there are three branches of government. Judicial. Legislative. And executive. Every branch has its own special job. The people involved in each branch are also very important. For example, Ohio has seven core justices. The job of the justices is to protect the people's rights during trial but still make sure they are following the laws. The Supreme Court is the court of last resort. There are four other courts below this one. Municipal courts, courts of claims, courts of common pleas, courts of appeals. The legislative branch also has important leaders and tasks. Our state representative is Stephanie Kunze. Our state representative listens to our concerns and tries to help us. She can serve for four two-year terms. The House of Representatives has 99 people. Out of these 99 people there is one speaker of the House. His name is Clifford Rosenberger. This is the room in which the House of Representatives meet to discuss the issues that concern Ohio and its people. The House as superpower is that it can propose tax laws. The House of Representatives is very crucial in the Ohio government. They issue the taxes and try to do everything in favor of the people. They like us other important things also. Now let's talk about the Senate. The Senate has 33 people. They are the other half of the legislative branch. The Senate is just as important as the House of Representatives even if there are only one third of the people. They represent the people and pass legislation based on their wants slash needs. Together, these two groups form the General Assembly. The General Assembly is in charge of taxing, police powers and they have the ability to enact laws. The General Assembly decides on what bills will eventually become laws. But we can't forget about the last branch. The executive branch plays a huge role in our government. The executive branch includes many people. The governor. Lieutenant Governor, Attorney General, Auditor, Secretary, Treasurer, Board of Education, and the Governor's Cabinet. Each person or group has their own special job that contributes to Ohio's wonderful government. For example, the duty of the Governor is to sign or veto bills that have passed the legislature. They also convene special sessions of the legislature for certain purposes. The Governor also gives a report on the condition of the state at the beginning of the regular meetings of the legislature. As you can see, this is a very important job. All three branches work together to form a strong government. They use checks and balances to make sure that no branch abuses its power. An example of checks and balances is when the governor vetoes a bill. He has this check over the legislative branch. Well, Maddie, did that answer your question? Mostly, but I would still like to know how we decide on who will be in charge of what. Oh yes, I knew I forgot something. Let's have a look. We have what's called a representative government, which means government is for the people. We vote on who we want to represent us. For example, Mr. P. You know and Mrs. Lay are battling for who will represent Gold House in the upcoming pep rally. We have to vote on who we want to represent us. The winners of the election only have the power that the people who give them. Government is created and sustained by the consent of its people. This is called popular sovereignty. This is an example of popular sovereignty. The people are protesting and limiting the power of the government. People power activate. So Matty, do you think you know how Ohio's government balances our personal freedoms with order in our community? Yes, Mr. Elliot, I think I can explain it to the class. Ohio's government is always working to do what is best for the citizens. But there are some things the government cannot do. For instance, the police cannot just lock you up for no reason. We have certain freedoms that the police must respect. They also cannot take and search through your property. To do this they must have a valid search warrant. In fact not too long ago a case involving this occurred. A police officer seized a man's phone and searched it. On the phone he found evidence of violence and drugs. Technically what was found on the device was illegal and the man should have gone to jail. But since the officer searched the phone without a warrant the man was not charged. Ohio's Constitution. Article 1 Section 16, protects us from searches unless a search warrant is presented. A government official must have probable suspicion to apply for a warrant. Representative government, checks and balances and popular sovereignty all contribute to the balance between freedom and order in Ohio's government. Maddie, you seem to understand this topic very well. 
Hey there, Mr. Gunn. Hello, Mr. Elliot. I just received some pictures from the field trip you took on Monday. Would you like to see? My class and I would love to see the pictures. This is the front of the Ohio Supreme Courthouse. It's a very important building. This is the main hearing room. As you can see, there are seven chairs, two flags, and curtain four. I actually don't know what that's for. This is an image of the ceiling of the Ohio Supreme Court's main hearing room. The intricate style of art is called Art Deco. Here's an action shot of Stephanie Kunze on the House floor. She's busy representing Ohio. This is the Senate. I hope you remember that there are 33 seats. This room is almost identical to the other except the public sit on the ground instead of above. This is our state senator, Jim Hughes. He speaks for our rights with the other counties in Ohio. Go Jim! This is the plaque outside the governor's office. Very impressive. This is a picture of some of the people in the executive office. They're posing with Governor Kasich as he signs a bill. This is me when I got stuck on the ceiling of the state house. Oops. Well, that is all for today. Have a nice long weekend and don't forget to work on your infographics.